Hello and welcome to another vidcast with yourlocalnote.com. I'm RJ. Uh, Mike off this uh, week, but he'll be back next week. We're going to be hanging with Minshara tonight. Uh, they're from uh, Central PA. They were kind enough to make the trip into Philly uh, to talk about their new album, which is called Io. We'll be talking with them in just a couple minutes. Uh, but just want to remind you that we are streaming 24-7. Uh, you hear the best Philadelphia music on our site. and All the bands, all the musicians are from the Philadelphia area uh, and the region. I should say. So check it out. And if you uh, want to bring your local note.com with you, we've got uh, apps free. Just go to the uh, locals, their respective stores, and you just type in YLN, download it for free, and you bring your local note.com with you anywhere you want to go. Plus, we uh, have the concert calendar. You can check that out uh, where you can check out where your favorite bands are playing. We got all that. If it's happening in the Philadelphia area, you can find it on your local note.com. All right, coming up next, we'll talk with the guys from Inchera, uh, and uh, we'll talk about their new album, Io. We're going to start off with a song from the album. It's called Into the Night on yourlocalnote.com. Don't you know that heaven is waiting? Time to catch those dreams we're chasing. Trying to keep my hands from shaking. We've all been holding on. Am I just another face on the ship? is called Into the Night. The album is Io. The band is Manshara. Guys, welcome to yourlocalnote.com. Thanks Thank for having us. Having All right. Uh, real quickly, <laughs> yeah, let's run down. Yeah, we did have some technical <laughs> difficulties. <laughs> Understand that. Let's run down uh, the lineup here. We'll start with you to my left. I'm Aaron, and I'm the singer slash guitar player. I'm Evan, and I play drums. I'm Mike. I uh, play guitar. Tell jokes. <laughs> Daniel, uh, play bass and 
don't laugh at his jokes. Oh, okay. Uh, All right. That's pretty accurate. All right. <laughs> Basically, everyone doesn't laugh at his jokes? That's all right. All right. That's very cool. <laughs> All right, uh, let's got talk about how the band got together, guys. How did that happen? Um, yeah, it actually started on South Street in Philadelphia at the TLA um, back in late 2010. Um, we were separately at a concert uh, to see, I think we all agree, uh, one of our favorite bands, or two of them, is uh, a band out of Doylestown called Circus Survive and a band out of the San Francisco area uh, called Dredge. And um, it, it just happened to be a, a lucky coincidence, and we musically were looking for something uh, to do, and right place, right time, conversations led to practices, led to a band. Did you guys know each other before that night? Did you know just of of each other? How, we how did... we knew each other. We had played in our own projects, uh, some together, some separately, and um, but it had been five or more years until we were able to um, uh, meet and kind of see each other again in the same place. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, and it was was it one of those things where when you started playing, you felt that this was this was a good thing. Absolutely. You you played in other bands before. Yeah, definitely. Actually, me and me and Dan were already in a band, so we were kind of con- trying to continue this band, but start something new, start an, a whole new sound, if you would. And we actually started uh, with some just some ideas. I started writing on some uh, computer programs like Reason and Ableton, and uh, with those ideas turned into songs, and then Minshar became a band after we met at this concert. Okay, very cool. Um, let's talk about the song Into the Night. Who, who wrote it and what is it about? It was one of the um, only songs that we actually uh, wrote mostly entirely, actually, in the studio. We had a couple ideas came, we came to the studio with, and uh, Taylor, our producer, uh, was like, this has the potential to be really awesome. So we did some tweaking with uh, some, some lyrics and certain parts and... Uh, just creating, getting very creative in the studio and trying to write a really good, just a pop song, you know, that okay. talks a lot about um, chasing your dreams. And that's pretty much what we are doing right now. So it's a very self-descriptive song. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, then let's talk about the songwriting process. A- Aaron, do you do most of the songwriting? Do you, or the ideas come from you and then you bring it to the rest of the band and then everyone put, puts it in their two cents? Exactly, yeah. Every Everyone has um, ideas. So, you know, sometimes with the uh, origination of this band, I started with most of the ideas, but then once we started uh, cohesing, uh, being more cohesive, if, if I was to say it correctly, mm-hmm. uh, that... Uh, yeah, that really, it starts as like an idea and it always turns into a song when we actually get all, everybody's input on it. How difficult is it, and and you bring most of the, you I guess are the song starter, how difficult is it to, to present the song to the band and then have them not rip it apart, but oh. make changes? Rip it apart. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it depends. Yeah, it depends. Right. Not all the time. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes it gets ripped apart. Sometimes it doesn't, though. I mean, it really depends on how much it connects with everybody in the band too i mean if some of us will have just ideas and all of us will like it and some of us none of none of us will really like it except for the person that wrote it so, okay yeah. is it uh, a democracy where majority rules or yeah, is it generally speaking i mean we try to make it so that all four of us have the correct input into a song but it is majority rules it's uh, you know three out of four you know wins the uh, wins the day <laughs> but you know just to kind of add to what Aaron was saying it's like some songs do need to be completely deconstructed and then put back together to be able to get the correct formula the correct feel correct dynamics but you know like a song called the void which is on the album uh, the first time we heard it we basically never changed it it was yeah. okay perfect yeah. right from the yeah. get-go we added our we added our personality to it but we didn't we didn't really adjust anything no. as I, as was initially presented. The idea just yeah. hit, struck everybody. Yeah, it was, mm-hmm. it's yeah. clear. And I think we can all, we all are honest enough when we step back to uh, understand when it's right or when it needs to be, you know, kind Change. of pulled apart. Now you guys have been doing that. You've been playing in the industry for a while. Do you feel you're at a point where it's easier to communicate your musical ideas to each other? Is that something that uh, gets easier as, as the longer you play? Hmm. Not sure, actually. We just started uh, writing new songs for 
the next record that we eventually hope to put out. Uh, but um, it's a uh, after going into the studio, it changed a lot uh, for us on how we want to approach our songwriting and to help us become more productive with our songs and so we don't have to go into the studio and, and change everything all over again. So it's kind of like one of those things where, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it, it can be, but not all the time. Okay, all right. Um, so with the songwriting process, Aaron, are, are these things that you experience when you put a song together, or are you a storyteller, or is it a combination of, well, you know, this seems like a good idea, I'm going to expand on this, and it may not be something that you you exactly experience. How, how is Usually your it is from experience. Okay. Um, a lot of the songs are just because um, that's where emotion is usually driven from, is experience. So, okay. And yeah, and I like to be, I also like to st- to do the storytelling thing too it's actually okay. something i've tried to do more and more but it's uh you know you write how you write sometimes and okay so you just experiment and try new things and are you the type of person that once you start the song you just go into you complete it or do you sometimes write stuff and then put it put it away and then come back to it later that's i do both actually sometimes i'll have a song done in, in a matter of a day um and then sometimes I'll have like an idea, and then I'll put it away for a while just to let my to, to rel on it for a while, you know. Okay, very cool. All right, we're gonna uh, play the second song, "The Void," and we'll come back. We'll talk about it, and we'll talk about more about the uh, the new album that you guys are are promoting. You're hanging with uh, yourlocalnote.com. The band is Minchera. Minchera. The album we're uh, talking about is IO, and this is yourlocalnote.com with the Void. You are the
The song is called The Void, and the band is Minshara. Uh, the new album that they're uh, uh, promoting is IO, and this is your local note.com. All right, uh, Aaron, let's talk about The Void. What is that about? Well, uh, it's actually about addiction. Um, I witnessed one of my really close friends overdose and pretty much almost watched her die. Uh, luckily, saved her life, but it was one of those things that affected my life for a really long time, especially like my outlook and realizing how precious life is. And um, what the song was actually written uh, with a, a friend of mine, Quinn, uh, who we do, I actually do a lot of production with like EDM and stuff like that on the side. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, this was a song that I played for the band. Uh, it was just an idea at the time, and I just put some scratch vocals on it. And everybody was like, "We have to do this song. We have to do this song." So. Um, we uh, yeah we took it to the studio and it, and it was actually one of the first songs we recorded because we recorded our album in like two different halves I should say we did three songs and then we did the other seven later on in the year but uh, those were the f- are the top three songs that we had to pick from our producer was like this song is definitely going to be recorded okay uh, now with a song like that this was a, a very personal song yeah you you presented to the band. Do you guys know how personal this song is when he presents it to you? Uh, did you know the background to the story? I think we're... Uh, go ahead. Uh, I, I I didn't, but uh, yeah. I was able to connect to it emotionally, also because of the way that he sings it, not necessarily mm-hmm. the lyrics. Uh, I'll admit that I'm that guy that hardly knows any of the lyrics to any song, no matter what. I may be able to belt out a chorus when I'm drunk in a bar, right? right. but uh, that, that's basically the extent of it. But yeah. the music hit me hard, and the way that he was singing and you know the melody, um, that is what in- initially drew me to it and still draws me to the song. Okay, so, yeah. and did, did it even become more powerful once you found out the, the background to the story? Yeah, and you know we did a music video for this song as well and tried to incorporate... Um, you know the story uh, into the video as well. So I mean, I, I I was there at the beginning of the song and in the studio, and then in the 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 music video process. And even now, it's like I still I can still get goosebumps sometimes because it's such a haunting song. Very cool. All right, making the album. This is your first album together as a band, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. But you've made albums before with other bands. No, yeah, definitely. Okay, making this album. Uh, did you you talked you touched a little bit on the producer? Did you make sure that you had a producer? Because some bands yeah. like to yes. just have an engineer. We producer shopped actually. No, we uh, a producer was like the key thing. We wanted, we specifically decided as a band. We're like we've listened to these songs. We're in we're internally breaking these things down and putting them back together. We want somebody who. We can look at their work, know that they're on the same level as what we're looking to get out of it. Um, not only know their gear and know how to actually record it and engineer it, right. but are musicians themselves and and are able to offer that insight that when they offer it, we're like, yes, that's, that's exactly the idea that we're going for. Um, but sometimes they're just tricks of the trade that you're not aware of if you're not sitting in the studio all day. Right. And that's, we wanted to bring on essentially a a fifth, uh, like a temporary fifth band member who right. who knows the who know knows his way around the production, so that in the end, we're nailing what we're trying to do, and we feel like we got that with our producer. It, working with a good producer is like having an interpreter, and what they what they do is they take what you're saying and actually make it say exactly what you want. It's like it's being edited or a proofreader, um, and. It, Taylor was able to take our ideas and what we wanted to hear and actually give it to us. We it, wouldn't be able to do it on our own. I find it fascinating because there are some bands who only want to do it themselves. And and I respect that. I understand so do we. that. We, we get it. And But then there are other bands, and when you get a good producer, you can hear the band get excited and talk about, like you guys are, mm-hmm. uh, how everything came together. And it seems like when you get the good <coughs> producer, they do that. You know they are the yeah. fifth member, and they yeah. they bring out the best in you too because they they challenge you to even go to a higher level. Yeah. yeah. So did you find that with your producer? Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Yeah. Did yeah. now you said you, you, as we started this conversation, you said you went you went producer shopping. Yeah. Yeah. We actually went and listened to all of the records that we thought sonically sounded the best, and then we narrowed it down to like three or four, and went after them 
were and at the time um you know we really didn't have much of a following or a name so they kind of just like listened to our stuff and took so a chance you, you had to sell them on you instead of them selling themselves on 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 themselves a little bit i think he could went we went and met him actually in person and went down and checked out the studio he and, actually said just as a side note he said he's like He's like, I thought it was kind of weird. Bands don't usually come to meet me. They just give me money, and then we start recording. And we're like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, that's not how it's going to work on our end. Right, yeah. right. So so you you met with him, and you felt good, and, and then you jumped yeah, into the studio. We, yeah, because we actually, it was more also because, you know, monetarily, there was another producer we were talking to down in Nashville, and just the money issue was just, like, becoming a problem. We right. wouldn't have been able to make it work, but uh, just so happened that Taylor... Uh, it was located in Bethesda, and that's only about two hours away from where we live. Okay. And we also he also provided a place for us to live too. Oh, uh, cool. While we were down there recording, so it was actually we really lucked out, and, yeah. and actually fate took it took a chance too because we ended up um, we were down there recording, and we weren't sure if we were ever going to get to finish the record that even that year, and it just so happened that the band that was scheduled to record right after us, uh, this band Darkest Hour, got thrown on this really big tour with Killswitch Engage, so they actually opened up a whole bunch of recording time, and Taylor was just like, I'd love to record you guys rather than record another metal band. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Very nice. So, so it just worked out. So you guys were able to then, you, you live there, and so you just concentrated on recording. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Instead of, because sometimes you just got to record, go away, do your job, you know, if you have other jobs you know. and things like that, you, so you're able to concentrate. Yeah. How, how long did it take to record the album? About a month. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. 28 days total, I think. Okay. Yeah, because we were there for 11 and then another 18 or something yeah. like that, so it was like yeah. 28, 29 dollars. Did you play days. gigs while you were down there? Uh, yeah. Or is it just, no. it was, everything was, you yep. immersed yourself in recording. Yep. Really, we built a relationship with Taylor, so now we still speak with him. So, okay. Um, I mean, he's doing musical projects on his own, right. continuing to record. Right. But I think we feel um, comfortable just getting a hold of him, whether it has to do with music or it just has to be for some a joke or the Redskins. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I, I was, <laughs> I was talking with him a couple of weeks ago because he was going to come to a Redskins game with me. And what's the band that he just joined? From first to last. Yeah, from first yeah. to last. Okay. All right. Um, in making the album. How many songs did you pick from to to choose the uh, to make up the album? I think we had like thirteen, and we chose ten of the thirteen. Okay. And um, if we, you know, it was one one of those things where we took each song, listened to it like three or four times, and then Taylor was like, "This one doesn't sound as complete as this one." Oh, okay. So we chose that one to work on. So he influenced. He had a big influence on the album. Oh yeah. yeah. And we trusted him because if you look at his uh, back catalog, it's stellar, and he has. He has the credentials based on record sales and okay. the qualities of bands he's worked with. And then other producers, uh, one of the guys who um, engineered uh, John Mayer Room for Squares is a friend of his. Happened to stop by the studio one night while we were, um, I think he might have been mixing stuff. We might have been taking a little break and uh, he just played... He said, "Oh, what are you working on?" Taylor hit play. Didn't say it was us who was si who was sitting in the same space as him. And he's like, "This is incredible." Mm. Um, That's and, a good feeling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then and then he said, "Who are these guys?" And then we're sitting in the same room. Nice. And then actually to follow up on that, the past two years we've seen that uh, engineer around, and uh, I think he's also a producer. But we've seen him around, and uh, he's he's remembered us each time, and we've had conversations. So even in an in passing. Uh, maybe half an hour long conversation where we weren't even the focus. Some somehow he remembered enough. Our music spoke for itself. And, nice. And he keeps in. He keeps in. Uh, that, that's a good. Contact. That's yeah. a good feeling that you had. Yeah. That someone would you know hear your music. Yeah. And then it sticks with them. Yeah. Okay. Especially someone working on a caliber project like John, John Mayer. Mayer. Right. Yeah. 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 I would say it's a little a little up there. Uh, now Taylor, let's give Taylor a, a plug again. Taylor's last name is Taylor Larson. Okay. And his yeah. studio. It's uh it's in Bethesda, Maryland. It's, I think he Oceanic, Oceanic, Oceanic Sound. Oceanic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, got to got to give him a plug, right? No, no, yeah, no. yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right. So now the album is out, but do you have some songs that you're putting away for an, uh, uh, the next album? Oh yeah, we've we've started writing and we've actually we still have some songs that we 
still have on the back burner. You know, we've been actually playing so many shows that it's actually ha we've been focusing more on making sure our live sound it sounds as good as the record. That's been our uh, prim primary objective is at this moment. Okay, we're going to continue talking about that when we come back, but we're going to play song number three from the album IO. It's called World on Fire. We're hanging with Minshara on yourlocalnote.com. You make it feel like a diamond in the rough Like I just can't get enough called World on Fire from the LP IO and the band is Minshara. We're hanging with, out with them tonight. My name is RJ. Appreciate you checking us out here on yourlocalnote.com. All right, uh, Aaron, what is this song about? Uh, well, this song was written about a girl at the time. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's basically about being in love with somebody. It sets your world on fire. All right. That's literally what it, uh, what it says. And yeah. is your world still on fire? Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> my, my heart is cold as ice now. <laughs> Cold uh, we've ice. all been there. All been there. That's that's funny. <laughs> uh, so another life experience that you shared. Yes. Guys, did you know yes. that when you put the song together that it was about this girl yeah. that he... Yeah, actually, um, no, I've been I've been working with Aaron on and off for a long time. Uh, and, Ten years. Yeah, in a lot of different bands. And I, I want to kind of take a jab at you here, Aaron. <laughs> Don't do it. Uh, <laughs> but no, it's uh, his music style uh, always goes along with how things are going in his personal life. So okay. I was actually 
I was pleased that he was happy with the girl because the songs were happy and right, bright and, right, and okay. you know positive and you know and and then when you know things go wrong everything's so melancholy <laughs> and, and, and like emo and yeah and it's like ah geez come on so but, okay yeah. so, so this was a very good thing so all right so if if he's happy we're gonna hear happy songs. <laughs> Boy, if he's yeah. not, you're gonna have a, a, a real dark album. Then. Yeah, I mean, we're just all sitting, sitting around like slitting our wrists. I don't like to be too negative, you know. <laughs> what if I have a girlfriend by the next album? <laughs> Hopefully. All right, that's great. All right, you, you did talk about that you've been playing these songs for a while live. Did the reaction from the fans also influence what songs you wanted to put on the album? Absolutely. Yeah, because we all we all know what songs are catchy too, that, and people singing along is a big attribute to that too um because we have very sing-alongable songs okay so, <laughs> sing -alongable. so basically what you're saying yeah. is, is you write good hooks yeah okay go. all right a little, little more yeah a little easier i don't know i kind of like sing-alongable i like that i think <laughs> sing-alongable sing i want to i want to call webster's dictionary right now and... sing-alongable <laughs> the okay. new t-shirt slogan minchara sing very sing-alongable <laughs> okay. Do it. Very Please. cool. All right. You heard um, it here first. Yeah. <laughs> Let, uh, let's talk about where people can see you guys live. Where are you going to be playing? Uh, well, we just finished up our show at uh, at Dobbs as part of an open mic night um, mm -hmm. featured artist um, put on by uh, Philadelphia's John Fay. Very talented. We we, we know John. We interviewed John. Uh, yeah. He's uh, great. Uh, John and, and Brittany. Yeah. Yeah. We they did. They're the, great. He's great. I mean, we've seen him perform at yeah. various places, and always impressed. They, I think, they won an award uh, at, down at um, uh, the Queen uh, Live Cafe. Okay. There was they had an award show there, and they were like voted like best band or, oh, or best yeah. duo or something like that, which is not a surprise. They, they were very talented. The hometown heroes. Yeah. No, it wasn't hometown heroes. It was no. Oh, that was that. Then this was separate because I know it wasn't Hometown Heroes. So they did something with Hometown Heroes. Yeah. Okay, I'm sure it was that. But they, well, they, this know, was a, a, a separate award. Band. Yeah, they're really good. They, they deserve multiple, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so that that's good. I'm sure uh, you know that goes well. And then uh, what do you got coming up in the future? Well, we're uh, Thanksgiving Eve. We're going to kick off the holiday celebration with a show at Dobbs. Nice. Uh, but this one not an open mic. This one a a built uh, okay. bill. Okay. All right. And we're really excited about that one. I mean, not only is it the first or second biggest, uh, you know, night of the year for entertainment. For booze. Go out of it. However you want it. Yeah, it's go. Enter it's very go out of it. Very go out of Entertainment, yeah. 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 <laughs> very sing alongable music on a very go out of night. And. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> Aaron is starting a trend here. Hashtag you are, you, sing alongable. You are Start a trendsetter, <laughs> that's for sure. All right, very cool. Any other shows after Dobbs after uh, Thanksgiving Eve? Yeah, we uh, we actually um, the next show we have coming up after that is the 29th in Wilmington, Delaware, at uh, World Cafe Live at the Queen. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got that show. It, it, it's part of a festival, a rock festival called Wilma Rock Circus. Right, and um, we're really excited to be on that. The bands that we see on the lineup, it, I mean, it's going to be a solid show. So we got that opportunity because recently we just won um, the seventh annual Music Armageddon uh, Battle of the Bands competition. It was a multi-round, multi-venue uh, uh, competition, and one of the prizes for winning that was to get a slot on the main stage of Wilma Rocks. So. Very cool. Congratulations with that. Not surprised. You guys do sound great. Um, how stressful is that as a band trying to play that type of competition? I mean, is, 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 is that something that I would imagine, I've never, I've never played in the band, but I would imagine that type of competition uh, is a lot more stressful than just doing a regular show. I, I actually kind of disagree. I mean, okay. we, it, a show is a show, kind of, um, and playing music is like our job. So I, I didn't. I know myself. I didn't feel any additional stress. Okay. I always try to make sure that I'm, you know, playing 100 percent, whether or not I'm playing in front of three people in some place in New Jersey or 3,000 <laughs> people in, in some place in uh, Delaware or whatever the case may be. Right. So um, the the good thing about that competition, though, was that you know, kind of the cream rose to the to the right, top. So right. you're playing with other good bands, but that that only helps the scene. Okay. So it actually gives you more energy. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. the further you get along in the competition, I mean, bands were pre-selected, so they were already uh, very talented. But 
um, to move forward in the competition. It gives you more energy to share the stage with bands who are doing um, good work. Any bands that you guys were friends with that were in the competition, or did you make new friends in the competition? Yeah, I'd say we made new friends, but I, I think being, uh, this was kind of, I don't want to call it local, but I, I mean, essentially was uh, the Delaware, it was a Delaware-centric okay. or regional like competition, we were the furthest band. So okay. we were kind of, we were the outsiders coming in, and, and we were able to, you know, that that's what gave us validation was when people heard our music voted us to uh, ultimate like uh, because they haven't heard victory and they they didn't know us and they they're not i mean they may want to be our friends we right. we can call them friends but like we didn't know them before right. we got there so right. it was an honest uh representation of of uh, the public opinion fantastic that is great um okay then um the uh i guess the next step is wh where can people find your music that would be uh, anywhere and everywhere you type Minshara. You'll find us first on Google searches. Uh, you put it on Facebook, you're going to find us. Um, really, if you want to search um, facebook.com slash Minshara, uh, you can do um, Minshara Music is our other handle that we use. So youtube.com slash Minshara Music, at Minshara Music on Twitter, Minshara Music.com is our actual website. So you, you, you so got So one or the other. You, you either, got social media covered. Yeah, you yeah. either tag, you tag music at the end of Minshara, you'll find us, or nine times out of 10, you Google search the word Minshara and the first 10 to 15 listings will be us and then you'll get some Star Trek. Star Trek. Okay. And our music's also available to buy on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, RDO, Spotify. It's it's pretty much everywhere. And when you go out and play, if people are going to see you live, do you have CDs with you? Yeah. We do, yes. Excellent. Very cool. All right, guys. It was great hanging with you. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, Thank before you. we go, let's talk about the last song. It's called I Am Your Density. Yep. Fitting in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what what is this about? Uh, it's actually a reference to Back to the Future. Uh, we always say that too at shows to make sure people are just like, "What are they talking about?" Right. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, that uh, the song uh, was written about love again. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, that's pretty much you know it's a thematic thing with us you know because uh, and actually with a, with most uh, popular songs it's usually about a relationship or love or heartbreak. But this one particularly uh, was used as a reference to Back to the Future and the George McFly <laughs> reference in that, and we actually used it as a lyric in the song, um, you know, I Am Your Density. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Very cool. All right, guys, again, thank you so much for hanging with us, and we wish you the best of luck, and we're looking forward to some more uh, music from you. You guys sound really good. Not surprised that you guys won uh, that competition. It really isn't. So uh, the band is Minchera. Uh, the uh, new album is I.O., and uh, the final song we're going to play is I Am Your Density, but just want to remind you, coming up next week, we got a, another vidcast, so check that out. Also, don't forget, we are streaming 24-7, and we got free free apps. Uh, just uh, go to the respective stores, type in YLN, download it for free, and bring your local note.com with you anywhere uh, you're going. All right, once again, Minshara, the new uh, LP is IO. This song is called I Am Your Density, and this is your local note.com. You're like